off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! Hands off Syria! So thanks again so much for coming out today. We're here to express, I think, a very popular sentiment of our, of our opposition to an invasion of Syria. Not by boots on the ground, apparently, but somehow there's this unspoken rule that missiles lobbed at a country are somehow not an act of war. Now, if we're going to hear, be here to oppose the war, in uh, the, the war, I would be very straightforward, the war in Syria. What does that mean, given the context of this moment? Given that Obama has said, well, we're not going to invade, you know, we're not going to bomb tomorrow. He's been pretty explicit from the get-go, and he was explicit in his speech on Tuesday, that negotiation only works if military action is a part of it, is a part of the, is on the table for that negotiation. I don't think that's negotiation. I think that's threat. I think that's empire. Coercion. Yeah. I think that's coercion. Yeah. But let's take just a moment to recognize what we've been fighting for at Metro Justice for years, which is some basic semblance of international and human rights and justice, but also a real economic justice in our in our community. Yeah. Since 2001, we have spent a, we have spent 270 million dollars per day on war. Wow. Anybody have a sense of what we could do with that? A lot. I remember a few years ago when we were cutting almost every school's budget in this city by half, yeah. and we're going to spend 260 million dollars a day for 12 years on war. I don't think it's acceptable that that budget for missiles, that the budget for planes, that the budget for bombs seems never ending, but the budget for health care, for dignified retirement, for quality jobs, for housing, seems to always have immediate limits. So we're here to say, no, we don't want war. No, we don't want bombings and sort of uh, pretend non-wars. What we want are real, genuine justice for everyone in our country, for everyone in our world, and that that means, first and foremost, that the notion of, the, of America as the world police, as the keepers of empire, needs to stop, because it's in our justice and it's in the justice of the Syri in, in, the, in the interest of the Syrian people. So we've got just a couple of people that want to share a couple of words here, then we're going to make some noise and make sure people like Chuck Schumer, who immediately jumped on the bandwagon of, of, of bombing, no. hear our opposition. No. But I've talked a little bit about the money of war, and I want somebody with a little more experience to talk about the human costs of war. Mm. Everybody here knows Windsor Wade, right? Woo. I'm watching the list. Listen very carefully. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? The drums of war, they are beating in our nation. And the print media, the airwaves, and the conversations across this nation. The beating of the drums of war and the discussion of the merits of using the sledgehammer of bombing to make peace is heard once again. My name is Windsor Wade. Yeah. And you may ask yourself what I know about war. I'm a Vietnam War veteran who served as a paratrooper in the 173rd Airborne Brigade in 1971. I was a reluctant warrior, being drafted like millions of other 19 and 20 year olds to go off and stem the so-called tide of communist aggression. As a result of our nation's foreign policy, 58,209 Americans and millions of Vietnamese lost their lives. That is the human cost of war. So here we are on the year 2013, contemplating once again bombing our way to peace, this time in Syria. What happened to the legacy of the Vietnam War? Where has our Vietnam syndrome gone? I'll tell you where it's gone. The sands of Iraq, Kuwait, and the mountains of Afghanistan. War. 
so-called lessons of Vietnam were supposed to make us more wise in the use of military force to determine geopolitical situations. There's nothing wise about using military force to change geopolitical situations. No, there isn't. Our government has historical amnesia. So, what is the cost of that war? The deaths of Americans, the deaths of Bosnians, Kuwaitis, Iraqis, Afghans, Pakistanis. And if the government becomes too impatient with the so-called international peace process, the deaths of Syrians will be added to this list. I say no, no, no to the no. drugs of war no. and no to bombing Syria. No. no! Let us be peacemakers instead of warmongers. There was a song 10 years ago which asked the question, War, what is it good for? The response is, absolutely, absolutely nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> President Obama was first elected to office as a strong anti-Iraq war platform. I don't know about you, but I wonder, where is that peace-loving, war-fearing man we elected and re-elected? Where is he? Where is that man? We need to let him and the powers that be that we do not support the bombing of Syria, no matter what the justification they want us to believe. It's all bullshit. Barack, we need to know, you need to know, that we know what the deal is. And we're not buying it. That's right. As much as I admire you, enough is enough. We're not buying it. The human cost of war is paid in the blood that is spilled and the lives that are lost and taken. Having witnessed the spilling of blood and the loss of life, I don't want my government to use bombing as a pretext, as a means to bring peace. It does not bring peace. It brings death. I'll leave you with these words from Albert Kambu. We used to wonder where war lived, what it was that made it vile. And we now realize we know where it lives, that is inside ourselves. So let's tell our government we do not support this policy and that we want jobs, not war.